<clears throat> I'm a has been hotel fan. Okay, I think that's the worst of it. Now, onto the video. Alright, so if you've been anywhere on the internet in the past month or so, you must have heard of the new Amazon Prime cartoon show, Has Been Hotel. Maybe not for the right reasons. From the mind of animator Vivienne Medrano and given life by Bento Box and A24. Do you need me to give you a rundown of this show? I almost guarantee if you're watching this video, you know what the hell this is about. TLDW, the Princess of Hell spent too much time watching High School Musical and thinks all problems can be solved by breaking out into a number, i.e. helping people who suck get into heaven. Worst part is... It works. Or oh, maybe that's the best part. I think it's the best part. If you take a second to look at the contents of this channel, you'll start to recognize a pattern. The pattern being a distinct lack of one. I talk about games one second, anime the next, back to games, indie animation, I even made fan songs. Actually, let's ignore that last one. It should come as no surprise then that I like this show. And that's hard to admit, I think, because this show has its glaring problems and its arguably irredeemable qualities, but in spite of all that, I find it entertaining. And isn't it weird to feel like that's a problem? Now, not for me, mind you. I could give less of a shit about what I like and dislike. In general, I find that my tastes are quite open, and that I'll very often rather than not give things a fair shake. What I'm talking about is that I feel like me liking Has Been Hotel is a problem for other people. And before I get into this, I should really say that I have no real direction for this video. Most of the videos that I do are long dives and analyses into specific topics that I find interesting. But this is rather just a dump of my thoughts, because this show is inciting some distinct feeling in the depths of my gut. Oh, and subscribe, please. Yes, I finally got that in the start of a video. Okay, let's go. As I'm sure we're all aware, Has Been Hotel started out as a pilot, released online back in late 2019. God, it's been that long. Yeesh. From then on, it was radio silence. Viv C. Pomp even released another show set in the main universe called Hell of a Boss, which follows an assassin group named Imp and a myriad of problems. Daddy issues. It's it's a theme. Eventually, the news broke out last year that Has Been was actually picked up by Amazon, which was honestly a massive surprise. At least for me. I'm not sure if the grapevine or the like were picking up on those vibes, but the trailer came out of left field from my perspective. And really, that was that. That was my experience. And oh cool, I remember that show, and then I quickly dismissed missed it. I was never a fan of Vivzi's work, I wasn't a fan of Hell of a Boss, I'm still not really, the show seems more like a drama than anything else, it's just not my cup of tea. Then the days passed, and then the release date came closer and closer. Some drama surrounding the pilot's favourite character, Angel Dust, yada yada, whatever, it was dumb. I wasn't planning on watching it. I don't watch a lot of western cartoons like that. Bojack, Rick and Morty, maybe Adventure Time and Regular Show when I was younger, a little bit of Star Versus, but it's never really been my vibe. That was until I saw one of the songs appear in my recommended feed, the duet between Mr. Radio Demon himself, Alistair, and Vox. Out of pure curiosity, I clicked on it. I mean, I wasn't going to watch the show, so what's the harm? You can't be spoiled if you weren't ever going to eat. But damn, they ate. I don't use this language. They ate. It was like it unlocked a part of my brain, showing me this mix of Disney and, and Cartoon Network all wrapped in this extremely well-produced instrumental and direction. The sheer undeniable quality of it all just spoke to me. It was a jazz rap battle. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The Has Been Hotel pilot had musical numbers. I went back and watched it, and yeah, there were musical numbers. I forgot Alice Stephen had one. But those sounded like 2000s or 2010s viral internet songs. Charlie's number reminded me of the Camp Camp intro. It was that bad. But now, now they're, well, they're Broadway. The way that these songs are both used and composed mirror so many things that I've heard before. And it's done well. Like, really well. Uh, Happy Day in Hell, the breakout verse where Charlie gets on top of some blazing car and belts out is so Disney. Veronica hopping up on a dinner table and starting to yell about how she's finally beautiful type shit. Look, I don't know. I'm not a theater nerd. I don't know the ins and outs of casts or stage production, but I like music. Not enough to make a properly detailed analysis or anything, but enough to appreciate and draw comparisons. Hi, Shaw of the Future here. If you're wondering why the audio sounds a little different, it's because this video has been in production for so long that, uh, uh, I decided to re-record the entire script, so some of the things that I might say sound dumb, and it's because I wrote this when the finale came out. Uh, the horrible reality of having a shit schedule. Uh, anyway, back to your regularly scheduled program, I guess. I also like musicals. I don't go and see them very often because Whoa. tickets are hella expensive, but I went to see Hamilton on the West End if that means anything to any of you. I like Hamilton, and you know what? After listening to that song, I wasn't about to throw away this show's shot, so I gave it one. 
Oh, why would you write that? It's good. Okay, rewording that. It's entertaining. Something I never thought I'd say about a Vivzy Pop show. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a bit too far. Women just ain't funny. This show got the love that it always wanted, and I think that's beautiful. The pilot has almost 100 million views on YouTube, and I was almost completely sure it got shot down dead in the back of some garden somewhere. So, seeing a YouTube born and bred idea on the big screen with such quality and care is really touching to me. There really is quality. Sometimes it feels like the animators are flexing and that the direction and the storyboarding must have been nuts because the ideas translated are so kinetic and fast and goofy and imagery based, doubly so within any song. It's impressive. It really is, I think. If you criticize the show based on the animation quality, we might have bigger problems than me liking Has Been Hotel. I, I, I can't hear you, man. I, I mean, it's not as squash and stretch as the original pilot, but that's for the best, I feel. Sometimes things can be a little too confusing. The voice work in the show is brilliant, too. Looking at the cast list, yeah, that's not really a surprise. Erica Henningsen? Alex Brightman? Stick it to the man, you might as well have had Adam wave around a big sign that says, Say my name three times. Keith? Fucking David. They got Keith David to sing, man. I watched Princess and the Frog like 30 times as a kid. And yeah, there was contention around recasts, but I think this was a very good decision. With the direction they took Hasbin Hotel, it's not just some online show anymore, it's a musical. And having a cast that has performed and starred in loads of musicals is something many people would call a no-brainer. It'd be different if the character performances weren't as good, but they are. Let's not forget, these guys are also actors. They can play characters and this is nothing new. Intonation, voices, it's all part of a package. That and dancing most of the time. Would they reprise their roles for a has-been hotel Broadway show? Oh no, don't think about that. Speaking of characters, this is the main draw of the show. Well, depending on who you ask. In my opinion, it's the songs, but for the OG has-been fans, it'll always be the characters. Okay, here we go. Here's my top three. Number one, Charlie. Number two, Lucifer. Number three, Angel Dust. <laughs> I think there's a pattern here. Alistair follows closely behind Angel, but I can't have three completely entertaining to watch characters in my list. What will the papers say? It doesn't change the fact that he needs to legally change his name from the Radio Demon to the Smoke Demon, because my man does not give a shit. Demonic Overlords, God's First Man, or the Demon King of Hell himself, my boy will fire shots and then proceed to spin the block to catch more bodies. Hey, don't look at me like that. I like idealism, especially when that idealism borders on naivety and still powers through all the problems it faces. It's like a massive fuck you. Also, the redesign to lower the princess and up the queen for Charlie through making her sharper and her face a little smaller was a great decision, especially with how they kept how adorable she was. Lucifer is just really funny, and Angel Dust is an actual character. Michael Kovacs' Angel Dust was really heavy into the rough New York Mafia side of him, but Blake Roman seems to make Angel a little more approachable and smooth out his edges a little, which I appreciate. This this show hinges on its characters. And when I say this show hinges on its characters, what I really mean is that this show's fans are unhinged when it comes to the characters. They take every interaction like gospel and keel over gasping for breath when their favorite ship gets any amount of screen time. I'm not sure what drug everyone has been taking to be so obsessed for any scrap or drop, but that's the bottom line. And while the characters themselves are extremely entertaining to watch, I will say that the way the show presents itself almost makes you want to suspend your disbelief and take for granted that everyone in the hotel has a sense of closeness by virtue of all being at the hotel. I mean, in the span of eight episodes, there was a six month time frame. What? The one exception to this, I guess, is Angel Dust, whose built dynamics with characters is the most fleshed out, more so than any other member of the main cast. I'd argue that his dynamic with Hus got more development and meant more to him than Charlie's dynamic with her own girlfriend, Vaggie. But I might be biased because Loser Baby is such an amazing song. Lots of character interactions are just simple quips thrown around. There's not enough time to form long-lasting character arcs, not enough time to shine, many are delegated to the side character role despite being part of the main cast. In fact, time as a whole is something I feel like the show itself could have used more of. The season is eight episodes, with a second season on the way, and each episode is 20 minutes, which sounds like standard cartoon runtime. And this is fine, for the most part. With the way that the show climaxed, everything was brought together in a concise and satisfying way, and yet it felt like it was rushed still. The most damning episode is probably episode six, where it's revealed that the exterminations that take place were a secret in heaven before being exposed 10 minutes later in the trial, and that Vaggy was an angel, I mean, who could have guessed? People have said, oh, you don't like Hell of a Boss because it's too fast? Well, Trout has been hotel, it's much slower. And my response to that is, no. 
No, it's not. It's just as fast, but there's nuance to it, right? I guarantee you, if this season had 12 to 16 episodes, there would be much less hype and much less commotion surrounding each episode's release. But we're fiending for leaks for a reason, right? Further building on that, you guys realized there were two songs per episode, and by the end of the season, we have gotten 16 2 to 3 minute songs, including the likes of Loser Baby and more than anything. One, that's not cheap. Two, that's not easy. Oh, but just don't include the songs then. And if you responded with that, this is my third point. Three, then the show would have been bad. Whoa, 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 I take it back, I take it back. Flaming torches and rope down, please. Put the stake away and the straw. No Salem witch trials, if you will. I don't just mean that in the story and writing sense either. There's countless I could say about the story and setting, like hell being more of a vibe than, well, actual hell. None of the main cast feel like they really belong in hell, and that's perhaps the point, but rather than have the main characters embody any sort of horrid traits that make them deserve to be there, it's just up to the hordes of background NPCs to deliver that message. Even the villains, with the strong exception of Valentino, are strangely likeable. Vox is charismatic and Velvet gives off so much bitch energy that it scares me. But ignoring those issues, if there were more episodes, animation would take a hit too, because because animation is expensive, and I take a lot of amusement in seeing the exaggerated faces and movements of the characters whenever they speak. Look at Angel's first scene. He goes from lying down to sitting up on the opposite side, crossing his legs, winking, and all of his hands point to himself with this vigorous smirk. If that doesn't swipe your attention and give you the hardest first impression, I don't know what would. We wouldn't get that with more episodes. We'd get more static poses and single limb movements and flapping mouths. That's just how animation works. And while I think this season could have benefited with more episodes, it could have also been done by condensing the pertinent characters and categorizing the villains like Adam for season one and the V's for season two as an example. <clears throat> so this is the part of the video where the finale just came out and I would give my thoughts uh, by interjecting in the script. But that's uh, been out for uh, maybe a couple of months now. So I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown. The finale did a good job of wrapping things up. Everything tied into the last episode, which was extremely cathartic. I remember the action scenes like Alistair v Adam and Luke v Vaggy, though the camera in Luke v Vaggy gave me a bit of motion sickness. I'm not gonna lie, I burst out laughing when Pen just got blasted like his name was Toji Fushiguro, but I guess he got his come up. Literally. I thought it was very fun, very entertaining, and seeing Lucifer go batshit insane was very cathartic too. He's the king of hell for a reason, and no, Alistair would not solo. Anyway, enough of that. I know you're all still frothing at the mouth about the heresy I spouted earlier, and I'm here to tell you all, I meant it. Yeah, yeah, cry all you want, but believe you me, if it wasn't for the songs, this show would have not been good. It would not have the attention that it has, it would not garner the praise that it has gotten. You diehards would in fact die hard in this crusade against this opinion, but at the end of the day, it is my opinion. Come at me, come at my likes and dislikes, meow meow, how can you like this but not like this? It's just what I think, okay? Ah, I'm getting defensive, fuck. Who'd have ever thought we'd get bangers from the minds of Bobby, Big City, Big Dreams, and the FNAF 1 song? <laughs> This show gives Steven Universe, in a lot of aspects, but whereas I could give less of a shit about Steven Universe and I like has been, perhaps stems from its very musical direction. As I have stated, I like music, I like musicals. What I like about has been is its use of musical storytelling, which is very much the point of musicals. Musical storytelling is an art, an art that only comes into play in a handful of cartoon shows every, well, decade. I couldn't name one out of a Disney show or Steven Universe. But even then, Disney just has a monopoly on that kind of thing. This is a completely different ballpark, but the Kagero Project is an example of this. It's a story about a bunch of teenagers with supernatural eye powers, this depressed guy, a little girl who's the god of everything, and growing up. Standard Japanese things. All told through the medium of song. Dozens of song tracks about this story and its characters, which would take hours upon hours to timeline and explain. Someone has! Eventually, it got a manga and a mid-anime, but that's not the point. What I'm trying to convey is that musical storytelling like this is an unopened chest, rare these days, full of potential and wonder but also completely capable of disappointment and dissatisfaction, a Pandora's box of sorts. And like Pandora's box, has been brought along all of its amazing musical production and animation and characters, as well as the fanbase and writing. Before you found out about me, did you know angels could be harmed? No. <laughs> no.
I think Has Been Hotel does something that not many things have, and that's introduce people to the medium of musicals through musical storytelling. Many of the techniques and subtle things present in songs and characters are staples in musicals. I saw a comment about how you didn't know Re pisses parts of Hell is Forever like a quote unquote counter unto Adam. They undoubtedly were parroting some other comment they saw and they might have gotten a bit confused, but it's the spirit that counts. There is no other way to express how I feel other than happy when people take notice of things like Adam and Lute's connection with rock and guitar. Whenever they talk, the track switches to include some short riff or sequence to introduce them and their tone. Angel's connection with slow, sensual jazz and Carmilla's to the Spanish guitar. Even with songs like Charlie's always being about progress and change with a link to Grand Orchestra, just to name a few. And no song does this better than you didn't know in episode 6. When I first heard this song, I sat down with my hands clasped in front of me just thinking. Thinking about how this was just a Hamilton song. Not in the instrumental itself, but rather how it's structured, delivered, and performed. The way it starts with a soft piano melody and then rises into a pop rock ballad with Charlie before the guitar takes center stage with Adam and Lute, and then how it slows down as Emily processes the revelations for it to build up again with a rising melody and stabbing chords. And then the almighty repiss of Adam's introduction song, Hell is Forever, but this time contextualized to juxtapose his original use of it, with an orchestral backing this time because Charlie is singing it. Oh, it's so good. And the musical talking segment is just so Broadway. By her? She should know. We should go. No. It's so very Hamilton. That and Sarah's You Have to Listen It was such a hard decision delivery from earlier. I just thought it was funny. This song is probably the most Broadway I felt this show get. You Didn't Know hits so many of the beats that make a climactic turning point song. And you real theatre nerds can come at me in the comments and tell me whether or not I'm right about that. In the end, I'm just happy that this show is exposing more people to the style that musicals hold so close to their hearts, and many other mediums don't dare dip their toes into. There's something for everyone! They made Lucifer sing an electro swing, I think I know who I have to thank for that, Sam Haft. And with all that being said, I should probably get into the meat and potatoes of this dish. You saw the title, you know what I think about the story, but why do I think that me liking Has Been Hotel is a problem? Short story, the internet. Long story, the internet. And Vivzy. I have nothing against her, she hasn't wronged my family or cursed my descendants. At least to my knowledge. But the internet just seems to have this massive hate boner for her. I'm sure she's done some weird fucked up things in the past, as per anyone who has this many original characters, but considering she got picked up by Amazon, I don't think any of it is fucking criminal. The general attitude I hear about her is this. Her art? Fuck that. It's like people don't know what an art style is. Her characters? Fuck them. I guess literally sometimes. Her problems? Definitely daddy issues. <laughs> Can I say that? Is there a reason? Probably. It might have been small things at first, but Vivienne appears to have a very strong stance on people who don't like her stuff. I forget which rule of the internet it is, but there's almost certainly one that says do not feed the trolls. I think Vivzi's handbook is missing that page. Inevitably, it causes the festering of her haters and for many people who don't know any better to join in the fray. That and she seems to be a little insensitive at times. Yeah, having a sex joke in a tweet about a song of your show's most popular character living through the horrors of SA might not be the call. Which brings me on to this. The topics brought on by the show. Yes, I'm gonna tiptoe around this because god forbid I have an opinion about Angel Dust's struggles. You like poison and suddenly you spot abusers and the fetishization of SA. You like lose a baby and suddenly you're victim blaming. My bad, Twitter. And yes, it's mainly Twitter. I don't use Twitter, I never have, and this is not making me want to use it anymore. Has Been Hotel is an adult cartoon. We'll frame that in quotation marks if my intonation wasn't enough. This means it can very directly touch upon sensitive topics once in a while among the slew of curse words and innuendos. And I might be generalizing when I say this, but I feel like the audience that this show brings in is very sensitive to these topics, which is fair. But that combined with Vivzi's very active hatedom is not a good combination. Not to mention, if you say anything about any character in this show, you will get 16 laser dot sites to every vital organ in your body. I can almost guarantee you that there are three different shadow organizations dedicated to detecting hate speech about any character of this show. Seriously, everyone loves every character in this show. Including douchebags like Adam, and I love Adam as much as the next guy. In a fandom where we praise everyone for being themselves, Adam is perhaps on top of the ladder because he is always himself. It's just that himself is a massive asshole douchebag. 
but I can respect that. The worst part about being a has-been hotel fan is admitting that you're a has-been hotel fan. Because A, the labels slap taunts you due to the fandom's infamous reputation. Because B, the questions that get pushed into your face like you've been charged with first-degree murder. And C, because when you look into it, the show's not that great. And yet, here I am, a fan. I know myself and the values I stand for. If I thought that liking a mostly asinine TV show would put those values in danger, I wouldn't like it. But I still do. And having to explain that just doesn't sit right with me. And yet here I am making a full video on it. Ah oh well. In any case, that's my problem with being a has-been hotel fan. Bye bye